Okay. Uh, Channel 4 na pala. Okay. Um, so, again, salamat doon sa mga comments nyo uh, sa videos. Itong, itong mga pag-uusapan natin ngayong umaga, hindi namin nilagay sa video and likely, pero hindi sigurado, hindi ito mag end up being a video except maybe as a recording. Dahil, una, uh, hindi likely na kailangang malaman to ng volunteers. Uh, and even kung kailangan malaman to ng volunteers, uh, hindi pa kami sigurado kung paano ito ipapaliwanag uh, sa kanila. Uh, may tendency kasi na lalo na kung ang nag sasalita ay galing sa sa isang university may tendency na masyado madaming materials ang nilalagay um, I'm guilty of that and nagiging overwhelming uh, tuloy yung material at uh, uh, actually even counterproductive uh, and yun nga, dagdag ko lang, we're also learning na as we make more presentations like this, as we hold more trainings, uh, the comments allow us to make uh, even small adjustments. And even the small adjustments uh, make a huge difference. And so uh, there's two things na I request ko sa inyo for these presentations. One is yung sinasabi ko kahapon na kung meron kayong tanong at any point in the middle of the presentation, feel free to uh, unmute and speak up. Uh, siguro if hindi kayo comfortable with that, you can also raise your hand. But I will request some of the co-hosts to interrupt me uh, to call attention to, to, to that question. Or uh, kung ayaw nyo pa rin ng ganon, uh, mag-type kayo sa chat box and then I'll just again ask the co-host to, to stop me, uh, read out the question, and uh, I, will, I will respond right away. Uh, sa mga classes ko, lalo na ngayon, uh, I'm teaching a lecture with 160 students. There's two things that I keep telling them. One, there are no stupid questions. The stupid question is the question you didn't ask. And even with that, almost always, magtatanong nga yung sudyante. Pero kung magtatanong siya, usually tapos na yung klase. Uh, and... Usually, ang una kong sasabihin before I answer the question is, you know, sana sinanong mo sa akin yan habang nandidoon pa lahat ng kaklase mo. Dahil uh, very useful yung tanong mo and gusto ko sanang marinig ng lahat yung sagot. Okay. So, two things. Request uli. We need your comments on how things are presented, the content that's presented, because it helps us improve the materials and the delivery uh, uh, but and pangalawa uh, yun nga if it's the details about the content uh, please uh, tanungin niyo ako habang nadudoon pa ako sa slide na yun, uh, or hindi masyadong malaya this slide na yun, and uh, we will respond to that we will get more done uh, that way and in a more time efficient fashion even sa team namin, we do this, uh, we train each other, and uh, yung first versions na tong lecture na maririnig nyo, uh, we tried this nung Enero, nung January, and it was a disaster kasi it, was, it ended up running for more than three hours. And uh, yun nga, I, I felt it was a disaster. 
this will not take three hours. <laughs> okay, sige. Uh, hindi na ako magpapakita sa camera. Okay, so, Coral Reef. I click to add text. Okay, so, uh, Coral Reef is a geological structure. And most people confuse the corals for the coral reef. If you have a place with corals, that does not automatically mean that you are looking at a coral reef. Okay, so a coral reef is much bigger than the corals, and a coral reef is much older than the corals that you see underwater. This is because the coral reef is an accumulation of skeleton of not just corals, but other organisms that live in that reef. And as you see in this diagram sa, sa kanan, uh, it takes about uh, 100 years for a reef to grow one meter. Uh, mabilis na, and this is based on a Philippine reef, mabilis na ang 1.3 meters in 100 years. Okay. 1.3 meters may not sound like much, pero if that 1.3 meters na tumutubo is mga 17 kilometers long, you can imagine na malaki talaga ang coral reef. So it's called the coral reef because it is uh, built by corals. And some corals, like yung mga branching, grow very fast, 1 cm a month or so. Uh, but yung mga big boulder-like, uh, very smooth uh, yung, yung surface na, na corals, like yung porites, they grow one uh, CM a year, but they could be several hundred years old. But compared to the coral reef, even that is young. Okay, so yung nasa picture na to is the very reef na nakuha yung number na 1 to 1.3 meters uh, per hundred years. This is based on uranium thorium dates. Uh, it's a reef in Kurimau. And uh, you can see na nakabaon do sa bato yung mga corals. Uh, na fossilized sila. Uh, kusaan sila na durog or in the case dun sa nasa kanan, kusaan sila na buhay. And they're still in their natural form. Okay. This is what the reef looks like now. Uh, it's uh, a few meters above sea level, okay? Uh, because this reef formed about 10,000 years ago, and about 10,000 years ago, the sea was higher. Sea level was higher because uh, the the planet was warmer then. Nag warming about 10,000 years ago, nag expand yung dagat, and therefore. This reef, which is now dead, dahil wala na siya sa tubig, back then it was alive and it was underwater. So when you talk about a reef, and it's very important na maging klaro sa mga tao, uh, when you are really looking at the coral reef, you will see this again and again this morning. Uh, an old reef is easy to recognize because it has an area that's shallow, that's relatively flat. Uh, shallow meaning, uh, you know, hagat bewang, hagat dib dib. Uh, it has a reef flat and the reef crest that divides the reef flat from the reef slope, yung cantilado na bahagi. Okay. Uh, and usually, sa madaming lugar, lalo na pag around February, 
kung kailan mataas yung tidal range when you have the king tides okay uh pag mga around february yung madalas yung reef flat at especially yung reef crest lalabas yan sa tubig uh sa extreme low tides okay and then the reef slope and this is very important because the surveys are the methods that we teach in CBRAC 1 and 2 they're supposed to focus on the reef slope and this uh, picture from a boat na naghihila ng saranggola na may GoPro makikinsta mo na may parang tatlong hakbang yung reef slope uh, that's because lumulubog yung northern uh, Mindoro and to keep near the sunlight dahil kailangan ng corals yung sinag ng araw tumutubo vertically yung yung reef okay at yun nga one around one meter per hundred years so we have three kinds of reefs okay and then wala dito sa slide na to we have a lot of areas that are not coral reefs uh uh See, John McManus several years ago called them non-refal coral communities, which is a mouthful. Uh, pero sabihin mo lang, isang lugar na may corals. Okay. So most of our reefs are fringing reefs, but uh, the fringing reef, nakadikit siya sa lupa, pero uh, kung yung lupa lumubog, magkakaroon ng lagoon, between the reef flat and reef crest and reef slope and the island okay so that's when you have a barrier reef and uh kung completely lumubog yung lupa na originally dinidikitan ng uh, fringing reef it becomes an atoll uh some of you might already be familiar with the Allen Coral Atlas. Uh, it's named uh, the Allen Coral Atlas because the donor is the late uh, Paul Allen, co-founder of Microsoft. Uh, he gave uh, money to the University of Queensland and the National Geographic Society to uh, put together this uh, database. And uh, if the kalang let me switch over to a mouse. So what I'm showing is the Great Barrier Reef. It's a series of reefs, not one reef, a uh, uh, long series of reefs, about 1,200 kilometers long. Okay, so it is called a barrier reef because you see there's your outer reef. And there's a huge lagoon with reefs in it, uh, separating the barrier reef from uh, the mainland of Australia. Okay, but even within that system, you can see na merong fringing reef. Timbawa dito. This is a uh, lizard island. Uh, and uh, in the 80s, um, we spent a few days uh, being trained here. So you can see a fringing reef uh, around Lizard Island. There is a small marine station here. And you can see uh, one of the reefs uh, that make the Great Barrier Reef here. Merundishang Island. So technically, this is a fringing reef, pero it's part of a barrier reef complex. Yun talaga yung barrier reef. Okay. Mamaya, I'll point this out, but tabang nandi dito, pansinin nyo when you visit the Great Barrier Reef, even sa Google Earth or dito sa Allen Coral Atlas, notice na very distinct kung nasaan ang harap ng reef. Okay. 
the reef slope is here. Okay, the reef slope is here. The reef flat is here, and you can kind of see the reef crest. Uh, that line there. And yung cross section ato dito very steep, dito very gradual. Okay, madali ang site selection sa Great Barrier Reef. Dahil yung hangin blows from one direction 10 months of a year. And so, klaro lagi ko saan yung harap ng reef. It's on the east side. Okay. Uh, it becomes different pag the thing sa atin. Okay. So, if we go to the Spratly Islands, you will see a lot of atolls. So, unlike the Great Barrier Reef, merong distinct features ang mga reefs dito sa bahagi na to ng mundo. Okay. So, this is clearly like Tubataha, an atoll. It is uh, circular in shape and sometimes magkakaroon ng isla uh, because part of the reef uh, emerges from the water, but it's not a fringing reef. It's an atoll. It's a ring-like structure. And if you zoom out, you will see uh, the Spratlys is made up of ring-like structures. And often, uh, yung mga islands that make up one atoll, iba-iba uh, ang countries na nag occupy Okay, so napit tayo dito. Okay, mas klaro yung mga rings. Okay, so dito, that is one atoll. And I think you can still consider this part of that atoll. Here's another atoll. And the individual islands that make up that atoll. Okay. So this may appear to be a fringing reef dahil may isang isla, but actually the whole structure is one atoll. And then, habang naalala nyo pa yung itsura ng Great Barrier Reef, pansinin nyo yung mga reefs dito sa Southeast Asia. Sa coral triangle, tingnan nyo yung appearance ng harap ng reef okay, is very distinct sa northeast end at sa southwest end. Kanina binanggit ko, sa Australia, klaro yung harap ng reef kasi 10 months of a year galing yung hangin sa isang direction. Dito, dahil meron tayong amihan at habagat, we have the northeast and southwest monsoon. Pag uh, latter half ng year, and it, between June and August, dito galing yung hangin sa southwest. So ito yung harap ng reef. Pero pagdating ng November to about April, yung harap ng reef ay nandoon naman sa northeast end. Okay. So in other words, dalawa ang harap ng reef sa Pilipinas. Okay. Something that is consistent but with exceptions sa atin. Okay. So for example, I will point this out again. Medyo nagahang lang yung machine ko. Okay. This is Pagasa Island. Okay. You can see the runway. It's actually longer than the island. 
And uh, people survey this reef as if it's a fringing reef. Okay. Pero, so ito yung harap ng reef. You can see na nung kinuha itong satellite image na to, likely uh, the Amihan was blowing. Okay. So you can see the bre waves breaking sa reef crest. Ito yung reef flat. Ito yung reef slope. Okay. And the surveys need to be done here. Ganyan. Pero, if you go to the northeast, klaro, nandito yung harap ng reef. Pero kung maghanap ka ng isa pang harap ng reef sa southwest end, you will not find it. Bakit? Because this is not a fringing reef. Pag-asa is part of an atoll. And the other harap ng reef is not on Pagasa Island. It's here. So, ang mga reef sa Pilipinas merong reef slope na kaharap sa northeast. Yun yung harap ng reef. Pero kung may reef slope din siya na nakaharap sa southwest, that is also harap ng reef. And the harap ng reef is very important because that's where most of the reef growth is happening. And that's why I keep emphasizing this. And you have to see this for yourself uh, by looking at all the images in this uh, database. Okay, so on a satellite image, which part is really reef and which part is just sand or minsan yung effect ng satellite image na pinapotol nila yung image after a certain distance? Yeah, uh, that's a problem with Google Earth mostly. Uh, magkakaroon ka na impression na merong biglang change in depth pero actually pinutol nila yung image and then nilalagyan na lang ng simulation ng dagat na may alon pa. Okay. Sa alin, hindi yun masyadong problem. Pero that question is a good one. You cannot really distinguish it from an image. Uh, you, you have to see the reef and in reality, you have to take course to make sure na it is indeed an accumulation of coral. Okay. But for, for our purposes, uh, yung inferences na pansinin nyo yung harap ng reef, it always looks more solid. Okay. There is that uh, edge that you can see. Now, you will not see on this side because jan nagbabago yung depth very slowly, gradual yung slope, as opposed to yung harap ng reef where you have a drop-off. Not necessarily a wall, but you will have an angled reef slope. So uh, I'll show you more images uh, shortly. Kung hindi ko na clarify and uh, i-remind nyo ko ulit. Okay. So we will talk about uh, well-developed reef in uh, many slides uh, this morning. But ang point dito is a coral community is just uh, an area, a uh, rocky area, na tinutubuan ng corals. Okay. That is not a coral reef. Yung madami tayo and medyo mahirap uh, minsan i-distinguish is you may have one or 2,000 years of growth. Kanyan. A dotted line here represents about 2,000 years. And you will have in a coastline, merong reef slope pero walang reef flat. Okay. So technically, that's a young reef or bagong panganak na reef. Ganyan. Uh, it's too young to have a reef flat. Okay. A well-developed reef, on the other hand, could be about six to 10,000 years old, which is usually the case of Pilipinas. And you will have a reef flat. 
part na pwede mong lakaran, mababaw lang siya, then the reef crest here, and then the reef slope. And the surveys must be done on the reef slope and ideally the reef slope na nakaharap sa amihan or sa habagat because it's, it's in these places na mas mabilis tumubo yung reef and a reef growing uh, will grow as close to the surface as possible uh, but more often it will grow outwards away from the oldest part which is land so ganito ang pisa ng reef then a few thousand years ganito na itsura then several thousand years ganito na itsura at pag meron na siyang reef flat we call it a well developed reef okay so the other thing we should remember is in many reefs na well developed you will have other habitats uh, growing on that reef. So uh, you will have seagrass, you will have uh, seaweeds. The seaweeds usually just before the reef crest or on the reef crest. And then the landward na edge, uh, you will find the mangroves. And uh, as they teach you in many courses, these habitats interact. And ideally, kung naghahanap kayo ng protected area, ito yung iprioritize nyo. Dahil uh, studies are showing, even local ones, na pag malusog yung reef, malusog at malawak yung seagrass, malusog at malawak yung mangrove, you will have more fish, greater biomass, greater diversity, and uh, they support each other, they help sustain each other, like the mangrove and seagrass protects the corals from things that are washing off from land uh, in rivers or run off uh, from rainfall. Okay. So, uh, that's the other reason why we focus tayo dapat dun sa mga well developed reef kasi more likely you will also have these other habitats near it and um, almost i think uh, the end of this lecture uh, when you have a fringing reef or a barrier reef you will have big changes in the environmental conditions, even if you move a few meters uh, along that reef flat or down the reef slope. Okay, magbabago yung linaw ng tubig, magbabago yung lakas ng current, magbabago yung lakas ng alon, and these big or even gradual changes in environmental conditions favors some species more than others. And that is why uh, in well-developed reefs, you will find a greater variety of coral. And the kind of coral will depend on where you are in that reef. If you go to parts of the reef, kahit reef slopes, na hindi masyado exposed sa alon, uh, you will have more branching corals. And branching corals tend to have high cover. Uh, near the shallow parts, you will see a lot of table corals near the reef crest. Uh, but in places where malakas yung alon, these table corals will be replaced by massive and encrusting forms. Uh, but in other places, the massive encrusting forms will be lower uh, down the reef slope or nandito sa likod ng reef crest. Okay. Ang point dito is yung distribution ng coral at yung coral cover ay hindi pare-pareho around the reef, around an island, uh, but definitely, and that's why the surveys must be done here, usually this is where you have 
the combination of high coral cover and high variety, richness, diversity of corals. Hindi lang madami yung coral, madaming klase ng coral. In other places, madaming coral, pero isang species lang, or lima, dalawa, tatlo. Uh, in other places, madaming diversity, pero ang baba ng coral cover. But if you go to the part of the reef na mataas, uh, ano, na nakaharap sa amihan, or sa habagat, lalo na kung well-developed na reef yan, may reef flat, you will have a combination of high cover and high diversity. Okay. Uh, keep that in mind because yun nga, in uh, this part of the world, ang lakas ng role ng uh, monsoons. Okay. Uh, any questions while I, excuse me, switch over to uh, the main presentation? <laughs> 